How are you guys doing tonight? Woo! I'm pretty pumped to be here right now. You guys are the oldest people that I've ever spoken to. Yeah! <laughs> no, it's crazy. Do you guys feel old? You do, no? When I was when I was in high school, I felt old. It's like oh, mostly like when I was like a junior or senior, I was like getting so old. Like dang, I can drive now. I have a job. I have money to buy gas with, like, so I can actually go places in the car that I have. And I was pumped. But I wasn't always, wasn't always old. When I was in third grade, I moved from Impressa Elementary School to, you know what's up? What's Impressa? Dude, I went. Impressa! Half of third grade. You went there too? Yeah, I got a piece of third. <laughs> what track were you on, do you know? Orange track. Orange. Oh, I was dude, green. That's what's up. I was green track. It's not orange. I don't even think they have orange this track for life, dude. I went to anyway, I went. I went to Impressa Elementary School, and halfway through the year, I switched to Tri City Christian. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. I liked Tri City. It's changed a little bit since I've been there. But do you have to wear uniforms now. Oh my gosh. No, I just had to wear like khakis and like a polo shirt. Oh, not really. Not really. Uh, we could actually wear flat shirts too. Do you consider that uniform? So this would almost be uniform minus the jeans because of the rivets. I know. But anyway, I went to Tri City and and um, I met some friends there. Some awesome, some awesome. Well, not young men. Awesome eight-year-old guys. We were hanging out. We had a great time together. Um, my favorite part of school was recess. And like, I know that goes without saying that was all, all of your favorites as well. Um, but what we did at recess is we played football, like almost every recess, like for all of elementary school, like we just played football. We had this little tiny football that at the time felt like a full size football and we're like, yeah, we're legit. Like we have this big football and really it was like this big. And you, you threw it now, grown hands, you wobble all over the place. But we used to play this little tiny football and we'd, we'd play in the, in, the, in the big parking lot there. And, and I had this friend named Daniel. And Daniel was an incredible thrower. Like he, he was the quarterback for every game. Like he, that guy, it, even when he was eight years old, could throw it like full football field. Like he just made that thing soar. And I was pretty fast, so I was always like scurrying like a squirrel, like just like yeah, got it. Like and we made an incredible team. And and we used to play the basketball courts. Um, and one day we're playing, and and we're we have like the full court to go still, and. It, Basketball court was like, that was like huge when you were eight years old. And, and Daniel, you know, he gets down, he's like, blue, 42, set, all right. And he pulls back, he does this, you know, three step drop, uh, drop back, and, and he just sees me going. I'm just, I'm, I'm going so fast, as fast as an eight year old could possibly go. I'm like, yeah, like just going for it. And, 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 I, and I turn, and I see this ball just coming from me. I'm like, yeah, who got it? And it gets in my hands and then <laughs> lights out. And, and the next thing I remember is, is I'm leaned up against this, this concrete pillar. And I, and I have the ball in my lap and I'm like, what is that? <laughs> and then I remember I was like, we were playing football, there's a football. And I was like, did I catch it? And they're like, yeah! And I was like, yeah! And I was like so pumped. And they're like, dude, Steven, you hit that pole. So hard, and I was like, I know, I blacked out. Like I was, it was, it was crazy. But I caught the ball, and I was like, I'm the man. I'm the eight-year-old man. Like I thought I was like, I was on top of the world. I was like, I felt like I was so cool. And and the crazy thing is that as cool as I felt, as as much of a star as I felt that I was, I wasn't more of a star than anybody else on that field. Even the defenders who were probably blocking like passes to me the whole like morning. Um, Daniel was, was the quarterback. He's the one who got me the ball in the first place. I may have made the catch that like made it look like a cool play, but, but really we were all part of this team. There was no one person who was more spectacular than the other. I was a small scrawny little kid. There was no way that I would be able to like block a, you know, 90 pound, well I don't even know how old. 90 pounds was probably a lot for like third grade. So let's say like 75 pounds, I'm like 50 pounds, like 25 pounds more than There's no way I could block somebody like that. But I was able to, to scurry along and like catch this sweet ball and get knocked unconscious. It was incredible. 
Um, but but we, if you guys have your Bibles, go, go ahead and open up to Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians is written by Paul, the Apostle Paul, um, who prior to his conversion, persecuted Christians, if you guys don't know that. So he like literally took charge of like people who would go and like kill Christians and imprison them and some pretty some pretty intense stuff. Um, but when I was younger, um, back when like even high school and junior high, um, I used to have this idea of of there's there's more there's some jobs that are more important for the kingdom of heaven than others. I thought that, that pastors and missionaries were like this, like they were on this next level. Like if I wasn't on that, that level, then like I just wasn't living it, right? Like I just wasn't walk, walking the Christian life right. Um, but I was totally wrong. I was totally wrong. There's no such thing as, as a greater calling among, among Christians. Sure, if you're a Christian, you have a greater calling than, than the rest of humanity. But as a Christian, there's not one person, there's not one Christian who has a greater calling than another. All of them are important. So if you guys are in Galatians chapter 2, verses 7 through 10, that's where we're going to be. It says, are you, are you there? Go like this, if you're there. Okay, well that's enough. We're just going to go ahead with it. Alright, it says, um, on the contrary, they saw that I had been entrusted with the task of preaching the gospel to the Gentiles, just as Peter had been to the Jews. For God, who was at work in the ministry of Peter as an apostle to the Jews, was also at work in, the, in, the, in my ministry as an apostle to the Gentiles. James, Peter, and John, who, rep who reputed me pillars, gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship when they recognized the grace given to me. They agreed that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the Jews. All they asked was that we should continue to remember the poor, the very thing that I was eager to do. So Paul, so Paul and Peter had different callings. Would you agree? Paul's job was to go to who? The Gentiles. And Peter's job was to go to who? The Jews. So they had completely different callings. Neither of those callings was greater than the other. Um, the reasons that they, that they went to each of those groups um, was because they, they had a strong desire to go to them. They, had, um, they were able to, to, to communicate with, with that group better than the other. Um, being a pastor is no more important to the kingdom of heaven than being a shirt folder at Target. Like neither, like that, like those are on the same level when it comes to importance in the kingdom of heaven. Um, being a CEO of a major company, making millions of dollars a year, that is just as important as the pastor of a 25-person church. Like, those are equally important. Um, one cannot, cannot exist without the other. Um, for me, um, sure, I get to come, come and, and teach here, which is incredible. Like, I love doing this. But I, like, just recently started doing this. Before, actually still currently, in fact, this morning, I was lifeguarding. I was lifeguarding the Iron Man down in Oceanside. I've been lifeguarding down, at, down in Oceanside for the past seven years. So I get to sit in towers. Well, I did used to have to sit in towers. Now I get to drive the trucks around. I get to um, be up on the pier and dispatch and, like, work different switches and stuff and, like, make sure communications are going well on the beach. Like, oh, tower one is missing a rescue. Hey, buddy, you really need to go on that. Um, so that, that, that's what I've been doing for the past seven years. And when I was in high school, I didn't, I didn't understand the, con the concept, like I said earlier, of, of each job being just as important as the other. But when I got into college and I started getting involved um, with like the junior high ministry, I don't know when it, when it clicked exactly, but I started to understand that lifeguarding was truly a ministry for me. I had, there was uh, probably 65 people on staff who didn't go to church. Are they going to listen to Chris Hilkin or Chris Brown or Larry Osborne teach ever? Are they? Probably, well, like, I can tell you this, they're not going to. Um, they were, they're not churchgoers. They don't want to they, they go actively hear that. Um, but what I was able to do, that was my ministry. So I, would, I made, like, great friends with all of them. I still have great friendships with some of them. Um, and I got it to show them what, what being a Christian was like, what God truly had. Um, they, they might have been blinded um, by, by sin and stuff like that, 
Um, but I was able to get in there, and that was like my ministry. And it still is. Like I, like I said this morning, like, I was hanging out down at the beach with lifeguards like all morning. It was incredible. And that was the ministry that I had. Um, Paul and, and Peter, the difference in, in, in ministry that they chose was kind of controversial. There's, there's lots of places in the Bible where, where um, a lot of the Jews were upset with Paul for going and teaching to the Gentiles. And he's like, no. Like, I'm going to go do that. And Peter went and, and he taught um, to the Jews. Um, now, like I said earlier, we don't all have a greater calling than one another. However, as Christians, we do have a greater calling than everybody else in the universe. And that calling, um, no matter what you're doing, is, is to love God and to love others because of the reason, because of the, the way that he loved us first. Um, we don't just go and love just because like he commands us to, which that's, that's why we do, but, but it's also because of the love that he showed us first, and he wants us to go out and share that, that love with other people. Um, a lot of you guys, who, who's a senior right now? So you are, if you're going to college, go like, raise your hand again. So there's a couple of you guys who are going to college, and some of you are not going to college. It's totally fine. Juniors, who's a junior? Everybody else, I'd imagine. So you guys are going to be seniors next year. And, and as juniors and seniors, you guys start to, um, to think about, hey, where do I want to go to school? Like, what do I want to do? Like, what do I feel called to do? Um, you're going to go out and, and try and pick a degree. You might be undecided for like four years at like Palomar, like I was, um, and finally transfer to, to like a university, which is totally fine if that's the route you choose, four years at, uh, at a city college, not getting even an AA. It's okay, because you can still get places. It's not a big deal. Um, but if, that, if that's, yeah, George, totally. Like, you understand. Um, <laughs> And, and that's okay. Um, we all have a calling. And, I, and when I, I thought about this word, I'm like, calling, like, what does that even mean? I'm like, uh, like, is it something where like, God's like, you are meant for this. And you're like, uh, was that God? Or was that the popcorn that I ate? In my tummy? Like, I don't know. Like, that's what I was like, what does that even mean? So I looked up the, the word calling in the dictionary, and I was like, oh, this makes so much sense. The definition of calling, like having a calling, is a strong, des des wow. a strong desire to spend your life doing a certain kind of work. A strong, why can't I say the word desire? A strong desire to spend your life doing a certain kind of work. So I guess instead of saying, what's your calling, or like, what's my calling to be, what is the strong desire that I have to do something in the world? Or something like that. I don't know if that came out right. But you guys know what I mean. What what like what kind of desires do you guys have? Um, the first thing that, that I kind of want to look at to to really get you guys to think about about what you're calling is what that desire to, to spend the rest of your life doing is is what is your desire? That's the first question. Is what is your desire? Um, what do you want to do? We all have desires, and our desires change often. Um, when I was a junior and a senior, I wanted to be a chiropractor. The reason I wanted to be a chiropractor is because I went to the chiropractor and I was like, wow, this guy has it really good. He just cracks people's backs all day. It's super easy. It's like, man, this would be incredible. Like, I can totally see myself doing this. Just like interact with people, have a good time. I'm like, oh, hey, how's it going? <laughs> gotcha. Um, and I was like, I could totally do that. Like, I would, oh, it'd be so sweet. Like, now that I even think about it right now, I'm like, gosh, that'd be kind of cool. <laughs> like, those guys make some good money for just cracking backs. Um, uh, but, but overall, our number one desire should be to seek God. Our number one desire should be to seek God and to, to, to really be in tune with, with what he has for our lives. And the way that we do that is by keeping um, open communication with them. It's really, really difficult to, to hear from someone or to, to know what someone wants you to do if you don't talk to them, if you don't listen to them. It's incredibly difficult. Imagine being in a war where you're on the front lines and you have no communication with the like any artillery behind you, like the infantry, and you're like in the front lines and you're like, is anybody coming? Like I don't even know. Like, should we go or stay? Should I stay or should I go? Like I don't know what to do. And but if you do have that, that communication, if you have that radio, you're gonna be able to, to understand, okay, this is how it works, this is what I need to do to get to this point to 
accomplish this mission. So if you guys aren't reading your Bibles, if you're not praying, I encourage you to start doing that because that's going to open up an incredible line of communication between you and God where he can, he can show you what, what, what kind of desires that he has for you. Um, as long as, as you're able to obey God in that desire that you have, that's incredible. Like, what I mean is this. If you have a desire to go work for a huge corporation and make a lot of money, that's awesome. And you have to be like, I want to go like to this corporation and, and I'm going to work there and it's going to be sweet. But if this corporation is asking you to, to lie, to steal, and, and to cheat, that's not of God. Like That is something that you have to turn down. There's desires that are of God and there's desires that, that you have to pass by because they're wrong. They're, they're disobedient um, to God. Um, Sometimes our desires change. Like I said, I want to be a chiropractor. And then, I, so I changed. So first, I was like, chiropractor, so biochemistry. That's my major. And I was like, too much chemistry. It's was like, bio. Still way too much chemistry. Yeah. And I was like, business. I can do that. And then I got, took an accounting class. And I was like, no, not business. It's like, economics. And I was like, yeah, I can do that. So I took economics. I'm about to graduate this semester with an economics degree, and I'm pumped on that. But, but my desires continued to change. Now, each of those desires was perfectly fine. Like I could have kept going for it. Like it would have sucked a lot of times. Like and like sleepless nights of studying chemistry that I didn't understand. Um, but I could have followed through with that first desire and just continued to do that. Um, and that would not have been wrong. They're silly desires. Like for example, when I was preschool age, what I wanted to be when I grew up was a dinosaur. I was like, I want to be a dinosaur. And I'd like draw pictures of dinosaurs that were just horrible. I'm not an artist, so it was mostly just a big green blob. Um, and, and I was like, I'm going to be a dinosaur. You know, like when you're in kindergarten, you're like, they're like, what are you going to be when you grow up? You're like, I don't know, a fireman, a policeman? Like, I don't know. I was like, dinosaur. And that was a silly desire. Like, there's no way that I could do that. Um, and the same thing goes for, for like actual desires. Like they can be silly to, to the person that you are. Um, we also have to, to look at the next question is, what are you good at? What are you good at? So first, what's your desire? And what are you good at? Because sometimes that desire has no potential for you because you're not good at that. Like for me, I would love to be a professional surfer. Like I think that would be incredible. I'm not. Like, I'm not great at surfing by any means. Like, Jake is far better at surfing than I am. Like, he shreds far better than I do. Oh, there he is right now. Jake shreds hey. surfing way better than I do. Um, and, and if I wanted, like, if I have this incredible desire to be a professional surfer, it doesn't matter how great my desire is. Like, God would, like, have to fully change everything about my surfing. Like, when I surf, when you, have you guys ever seen a picture of somebody, like, surfing inside the tube? Yeah. How they're like, yeah in there, you know? Like, when I surf a tube, this is what you see. <laughs> like, it's horrible. I, I have the worst stance. I look totally awkward. And there's no way that my desire matches up at all with what I'm good at. I enjoy doing it. I love doing it, which is why I continue to surf. But there's no way that I, I would ever be able to, to become a professional surfer. Um, so what are you good at? Some of you are great at science. Some of you are like, Stephen, you suck at chemistry? That's OK, because I'm great at chemistry. I'm like, thank you, because we need chemists. Like, we truly, truly need chemists. Be a chemist for Christ. You know, be, like, if you're going to go to chemistry and, like, come up with incredible, like, antibiotics for people, like, do it for Christ. Like, people that you surround yourself with, like, let them know, like, I love Jesus, because this is what he did for me. Let's make some chemistry, you know? I don't even think that's a term. Like, make chemistry? I don't know. Um, if you're like a, a health nut and you're like, dude, Steven, I love to eat healthy. Like, I have this juicer at home that I just got, and, and I, just, I just throw stuff in there, and I just make different concoctions, and I'm like, oh, that's delicious, or, oh, never going to do that combination again. Like, be a juicer for Jesus. Be a juicer for Jesus. Now, I'm not talking about steroids. No steroids. No, no juicing, but, but like... But like making juice, do that for Jesus. Come up with a sweet company that you sell juice and people come and get it and like Jesus, Jesus juice. Um, 
<laughs> if you're super smart, you're like a math, you're like you're math and like computer whiz. You're like Stephen. Let me just. That's what you needed. Is that good, Stephen? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, that, that's no problem. I can make it even cooler if you want. Yeah, do it. And it's like you make some sweet website. Like that would be incredible. And you go and, and work for like some crazy huge company that everybody knows, like Google. You could be a Googler for God. You could be a Googler for God. Like that would be that's just like go do that for for, for God. And it, uh, Holy Spirit, we gotta come up with one for an S. I have one. So like the Iron Man this morning. If you're like an incredible athlete and you're gonna go run races and and you're gonna sweat a lot because you're running these races, you could be a sweater for the spirit. Like you could be like work out and like be gnarly and it'd be a sweater for the Holy Spirit. It'd be incredible. Um, and that might be some of you right here. You might go and out and be all of these. You might be all of these at the same time. That'd be crazy. That'd just, that would just be incredible. Um, but the cool thing is sometimes our desires don't line up with what we're good at. But, but don't lose hope because sometimes God can change that. Um, he can change what you're good at. He can, he can grow abilities that you didn't even know existed in the first place. You're like, how can you grow something from nothing? Well, God can do that. For me, freshman year of high school, I had to take a speech class. And in this speech class, have you guys, I'm sure all of you have, have been crying before, and, and you, you do this, or you can't talk, and you know, I don't know what's going on. I just, she said this to me, and uh, I, I, like you guys have all had that, that, that kind of thing happen. When I was a freshman in high school, whenever I went up to give a speech to the class, I would go up and I'd be like, So, the region that I'm talking about today is India, India, and I couldn't talk. Like I couldn't talk in front of people at all. Like I, it, and they were my friends, like people that I knew and had been growing up with since I ran into a pole. You know, like people that I loved and like hung out with all the time, and I couldn't even speak in front of them. But somewhere down the road, I don't know where exactly. I get maybe it was like a progression. I don't know. But sudden, not suddenly, maybe it was suddenly, I don't even know. But like, I'm okay with talking in front of people now. Like, it's fun and I don't do this anymore. Thank God, because that would be terrible. I couldn't get a sermon out like that. Okay, so Jesus said, like I couldn't do it. It would be impossible. Like, it would be impossible. Um, so if you guys have desires and, and you, you need something like to fulfill those desires, pray about it, ask God for it. When I first, um, decided to start leading worship, I couldn't keep tempo at all. And I was like, God, like, I need to keep tempo. He's like, oh, here you go. And I can't keep perfect tempo now, but I can keep it way better. Like, literally, it was like one week later, I could, like, hold it, like, a relatively consistent tempo. Like, God gave that to me. It was incredible. So if you guys have desires and, and you want to do those, pray about it. And if he says no, then pray for him to change your desires to something that, that he wants you to have, because he can change your desires. Which is incredible. Oh my gosh. Pray for God to give you the desire of his heart. And it will change everything. It's amazing what, what that will do. Um, but we all have talents. And in fact, like most of you know, there is a Bible story about talents. The parable of the talents. Um, so if you want to turn there, it's in Matthew chapter 25. Verses 14 through 30. Gosh, this is so cool teaching to people who actually like have Bibles. <laughs> like, like, you know, like the nine, the nine, ten kids. Like, who needs Bibles? Raise your hand. They don't even get out a phone to like show like a Bible like app. There's like, I don't need one. Got it memorized. Bro. I'm like, yeah, no, sorry, I don't think that you have it memorized. Um, did someone say I have it memorized? Wow! Oh, okay. <laughs> that would be impressive. I challenge you to memorize the whole Bible. Bible. Okay, well, when you're done with school. Okay, fine. Fine. See that way. Alright, Matthew 25, 
verses 14 to 30, and it reads, Again, it will be like a man. So, I think he's talking about the kingdom of heaven. So, again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, and to another one talent, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five talents went, uh, went at once and put the money to work and gained five more. So also the man with two talents gained two more. But the man who received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five talents brought the other five and said, Master, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two talents also came and said, Master, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, Well done, and good. Uh, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. Then the man who received the one talent came, said, Master, I know that you are a hard man, harvesting where you do not sow, and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here, see here's what belongs to you. His master replied, You wicked, lazy servant. So you know that I harvest where I have not sown, and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my, my money in deposit with the bankers, so that when I returned, I would at least have received interest. Take the talent from me, and give it to, to the one with, who has ten talents. For everyone, uh, uh, for anyone, for everyone who has will be given more, and he will uh, have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him and throw the worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay, so in this story, there's three guys, and they all get a certain amount of money. And, and the master says, hey, I'm going to put you in charge of this. Some of you will have different shares than others, but I want you to go out and, and make something. Up. Do something um, that, will, that will grow it. Um, and two of them do, and, and one of them doesn't. And, and it doesn't matter that the, that the guy with five made, made five more and the guy with two only made two more. Like, what they did was they went out and, and they made more with what they had. They made more with what we had. Um, a lot of times this could be applied to, to the gifts that God's given you. To, um, like, I'm good at this and this and this. And, and, and we look at that and be like, oh. The interesting thing is that it's talent. When we think of talent, we think of like, oh, that guy shoots a sweet like jump shot. Like, that's awesome. Like that guy has some sweet talent. Um, but, but it also refers to money. It, it refers to, to a gift that, that God has given. Um, it's not just about doing um, doing things for, for Christ with the the abilities that He's given you, but it's also doing things for Christ for the kingdom of heaven with the things that He's given you, the, the opportunities that He's given you, um, with just the the person that you are, like. You have different connections than some other people do. Uh, the third question that we have to ask is, what has God gifted you with? What has God gifted you with? It's different than what are you good at. What has God gifted you with? Um, Paul is a great example of this. Paul was, was three major things. He was a Jew. He was a Roman citizen. And he was also a Pharisee. So... One, he was a Jew, which means he was able to uh, relate and, and communicate with Jews on a level that a non-Jew would not be able to do. Um, second, he was a Roman citizen. What this meant was he had a passport to pretty much anywhere um, in, in the Roman Empire. Um, he could go almost anywhere relatively safely, whereas a, non, um, a non-Roman citizen would not be able to do that. The third is he was a Pharisee. His father was a Pharisee. He says that. So, so he grows up in basically a church setting. He knows scripture incredibly well. He's brought up in, 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 in a place where he knows the scripture. And he's memorized it. He's taken a lot of time to memorize and, and dive into the scripture. And these are three things that, that Paul used um, wrong at first. When he was persecuting Christians, he used pretty much all three of those um, against God. But when God changed him, he was able to use all of those for God's glory. He goes on multiple mission, missions. Um, he, he talks to, to Jews and Gentiles, and he's able to, to use the scripture that he knows 
uh, to teach in incredible ways. Um, we're all given certain certain things just like right before us. Like a lot of you, like for me, I have a Cal State San Marcos student ID. This means that I can go to Cal State San Marcos anytime I want. I belong there. Can you guys? Yeah, you can. Um, you can't get into certain places that I can get into. You can't um, rent pool cues and play a sweet game of, of pick up pool, you know. Um, but you guys also have student IDs. And I can't just go to your campus and just start, you know, telling people about Jesus because, first of all, I'm 23 and they'd be like, that guy's old and kind of weird. Um, and, and I can't, like, I, I don't even think legally I can go on your campus and just, like, do that. Like, I have to get, like, a guest pass and stuff. But you guys are able to do that, whereas I'm not. That's your passport to your school. Paul had a passport to, to the Roman Empire. You guys have a passport to your school. Um, my friend um, Tim, who I talked to the other day, um, who, who I met at Cal State San Marcos, um, he was not always a Christian. Um, and Tim is a very outgoing and super friendly guy and very blunt. Um, and he was telling me on Thursday, I, 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 I like passed him by, and I'm like, we need to catch up. He's like, yeah, we do. And I was like, wait, I, it's lunch. I'm going to walk with you. So I just walked with him um, down to, to where he was working in the student union. And, and we just started talking, I'm like, hey, like, what's going on with you? He's like, dude, crazy things are happening, man. Like, this is like, and he's like, you remember the person that I was, right? Like, like just kind of getting by, like, as a Christian, not really doing too much. He's like, dude, like, what you said, like, do you remember what you said to me, like, a year and a half ago? And I was like, not really. He's like, you're like, what well, basically what I said was, Tim, uh, I'm not going to do this weird, like, he said, he said thing. Um, what I told him was, Tim, I can't really tell that you're a Christian. Like, when you told me you were a Christian, like, I was really surprised. Like, the way that you say things and, and the, the sarcasm that you, that you make towards certain jokes, like, I had no idea that you were a Christian. Like, you have, like, you, have, you come off really, like, as a nice guy and, like, super blunt with people and people will listen to you. Um, but, but I don't get that you're a Christian. And that stuck with him for, for about a year and a half. And this is the first time we've caught up since then. He's like, dude, that like really convicted me. And I've, I've been a lot more intentional. Like I don't make the jokes that I used to make anymore. Um, when, I, when I talk to people, I, I, I'm totally different. In fact, I used to, this is Tim's speed. Um, in fact, I used to like go up to girls and just say whatever I wanted. Like I was like, it would be like not good like what I would say to them. And because I was just so blunt. He's like, you know what's incredible? Is that God's like, Tim, you don't have to, to change that part about you, the bluntness. Like, I want you to use that. Like, that's something I've given you. You just have to use it in the proper way. Other people don't have that, that uh, confidence. But you have that incredible confidence, Tim. You need to go use that for me. And Tim like, is legitimately using that at school with the people that he works with um, to, to glorify God and to show uh, God's love to the people around him. Um, and the cool thing is, I can't go do that because I don't work in the student union. I don't have connection with those people, but Tim does. You guys have connections with people that, that others don't have. Um, in Acts chapter, actually, let's read, uh, go back to Galatians real quick. We're going to look at the last verse. Um, it says, uh, so end of verse 9. They agreed that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the Jews. And they asked that we should continue to remember the poor, the very thing that I was eager to do. Okay, so I'm not super smart, and I don't really, I'm not a commentator, commentator kind of person on the Bible, because I'm pretty young and haven't really dove into it all that intensely. Um, but um, I read a commentary, and I was like, what is like, what were they talking about? Like, eager to, to give to the poor. Okay, cool, what is that? Um, and it, it, it goes back to Acts chapter 11. I'll just read it real quick. Uh, 27 to, th to 30, and it says, during the time, some prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One named Agabus um, stood up and, and through the Holy Spirit predicted a severe famine that would spread over the entire Roman world. This happened during the time of Claudius. Um, the disciples, each according to his ability, decided to provide help for the brothers living in Judea. This they did, sending their gifts to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. So this is what he's referring to. He says, giving to the poor. And... And it's talking about the brothers living in Judea. And, and, and this, um, 
we're called to, to, to help the poor and stuff, but he's referring to, to the body of Christ. Um, there's poor Christians out there, and, and they, they want to do work for God, but they're unable to do so because they don't have the funds. And what's awesome about the body of Christ, and this goes back to what I was saying at the beginning, is there's no greater calling. Some of you may grow up to be major CEOs making millions of dollars a year. And there's going to be others of you who have an equally important calling of going and being a missionary in Cambodia. And you're not going to make money doing that. But you know who is making money? The CEO who's making millions of dollars. And that's why that is just as important as the missionary who's going um, to, to teach people about Christ. Um, so your desires. One, what is your desire? Two, what are you good at? Three, what has God gifted you with? These are important questions for you guys to start thinking about, or maybe you already have, which is incredible. But this is gonna, this is gonna change your future. Line up your desires with Christ. Make an open, open line of communication with you, and he will do some incredible things through you. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for these students uh, and just their desire to seek you um, and just to, to know more about you and to, to serve you, Father. I ask that you would reveal to them um, the desire of your heart, that you would allow them to understand what you've allowed them to be good at, the abilities that you've given them, um, and also just what you've gifted them with, what you've given them uh, to be um, in charge of here, here on earth, God. Just as, as a country that's just so much more um, wealthy than, than any other country on earth, God, that you would just allow them to be great stewards of, of what you've blessed them with, God. We, we love you and we thank you for what you're going to be doing here. Um, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, guys, let's thank Stephen. Uh, uh, if you guys don't know Stephen, make sure you get to him. He's awesome. If I could pick one person who's not on our staff to be on our staff, it would be Stephen. Yeah. All right, guys, but that's it for the service. Growth groups are back on this week, and student ministry applications are due this Monday. So have a good week. We'll see you next weekend.